as we are jumping into this just trying to figure out what the score is at least and oh my god demi's up one zero yeah okay so one zero up uh, i will say as well these two players fairly evenly matched too so i think it's going to be an exciting zbz and uh it's going to be our first little outing today to dragon scales true the first time that we will be dragging on the scales and uh i'm just i'm just re really impressed with um with demi and like his run so far today to take down nicarak to be up against ender he's, he's popping off yeah doing very well as uh yep here we go his opponent spawning in at the top left hand corner of the map this is the pink zerg ender and spawning in the bottom right hand corner of a dragon scales going for it oh he heard you pop he knows what you mm. like going for a 12 pool we have the red zerg player representing Macharino esports it is demi Demi does tend to be very cheesy in ZBZ. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He can be, he can be. And again, we saw a different variation last time from Miyamika where he only made six links. I expect this to be a little bit more committed from a Demi. I expect him to have a little bit more, but yo, Ender goes for a pool first. Okay, yeah, and they're gonna be getting the best there of the build matchups. Uh, this is mostly just a defensive opener that helps deal with 12 pool so uh looks like he has won the little poker game there between these players yeah exactly you know a, little, a lot of these c players are known for their early pool timing so it makes sense for ender to open up a little bit more defensively um i'm not sure what happened in game one but it's also possible that maybe there was some early game aggression as, as it is just a pool first into a hatchery for ender so he will have access to faster units um meanwhile demi he actually went for a pool gas hatch so much faster gas guys are here from our zerg player yeah, very early gas, and this does kind of point towards the fact that he might be looking to get uh, even more aggressive behind this, potentially link speed or uh, even Bane links, as we do see his first few links. Going to be headed out across the map. Uh, looks like they will be scouted out by the second Overlord now. Yeah, the Overlord will be able to confirm them. The links do push in. Ender is ready with his own links, and he shouldn't be losing too much here, uh, as the links are going to be dancing with each other. Going to come down to the control, though. Ooh, oh, yeah, it is going to be close. It looks like Demi gets the best of this. Is going to be taking that uh, th with three to two lings remaining. And he is actually winning out on this quite comfortably. Yeah. Uh, and going to have to be careful not to lose these lings. There was a little bit of miscontrol from Ender. He did come out worse for wear, as you mentioned. He does have a queen on the way. And with the help of this queen, he should be fine. He should be able to fend this off. But he was forced to make extra lings. He was forced to make these extra links, and that is just lava that was not spent on droning. And as a result, uh, Demi, he has a pretty solid position here. He has uh, the, uh, an even worker count. He even has more gas here as a result of the faster gas geyser. Yeah, and Demi's going to be using that gas to go into a fast link speed here. So his link speed going to be very far ahead of that of his opponents. And uh, Ender as well is going to be thinking, because he's gone up against a 12 pool, that... He doesn't need to worry about getting speed so early. Yeah, this is going to be a big all-in from Demi. Yes, and neither scouts or links are going to be zoned away. They're going to try to get a couple of workers here. But again, Demi, good movement overall as he's shutting down every single one of these links. As you mentioned, for those who may not be fully aware, as the links are trying to get a scout off and they do confirm more links on the way. Oh. Yeah, that's a big scout for Ender here. He does see that there is a lot of links coming out from Demi and he can start up that wall and that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, typically when you 12 full, your gas is very late. It's very delayed. That's the downside of 12 fully. But because Demi went for a faster one, he's going for a big Ling Flood as well across the map. He has been scouted. Ender is ready for it. And Demi has the drone. Yeah, Demi just keep droning up behind this. Uh, I will say as well, the drone count is looking pretty even. So as long as he can force some units out of his opponent here, I think he'll be in an okay spot. He's going to be okay, but Ender is now going to be a little bit more efficient uh, because he's been able to wall off, because he recognized what was going on. He skipped link speed. He's going straight to Roach's. Roach production well underway. And um, yeah, he will be ahead tech-wise as a result. We'll see if he does work towards plus one carapace. We'll see if he can expand as Demi's going to try to bust in. Yeah, Demi committing onto that queen there, but the first few Roaches have arrived. Demi gets a scout on that as well. And behind this, we are seeing the lair coming out here for the Filipino Zerg and uh, for uh, Demi as well. 
Yeah, we have two spine crawlers on the way for Demi. He does take an extra gas geyser as well. Um, so Demi, he should be going into roaches of his own, but these spine crawlers, they tell a different story. Is he crazy enough to go to a spire? Yeah, it looks like Mutus here. He's going into four gas here, going into those extra spines as well to keep him safe from the roaches. So uh, I do think Demi is going to be going straight into that signature unit of his, the Muta. Yeah, this is a really risky move to go to go for, especially against two base two base Roach. Thankfully for Demi, like we're still a ways away from Roach speed. We're still a ways away from plus one range, so Ender should be staying at home a little bit longer, and this will give Demi the time that he needs to actually get that spire going. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. I mean, we do have those extra spines coming on and down. Uh, and uh, pokes forward with the Overlord. He does see these spines, and there's not too much else these spines could mean. And he throws down a Nidus. I love this as a response. He is going to be looking to bypass the spines here. Yeah, I was really concerned that Road Speed would finish up too late, and it will finish up too late. But that's why we have the Nidus on the way. So Ender's going to be sending everything across now. He does have an Overlord in position in the main, but Lings are checking Demi. He's aware of the potential for a Nidus, and he's ready for it, at least in his main base. Yeah, Demi does keep those lings around. It looks like instead we're just going to be having that Nidus at the front there. And that is going to be able to help as well just by bringing over those queens so the Mutus can't clean up the roaches so easily. A lot of spines coming down from Demi. He's taking this very seriously. Yeah, he's scattered the Nidus across the map with the Overseer. He's fully aware of what's going on. And there we go. We do see Ender on the front lines with his roaches, his queens. The sp the, sorry, the drones are here to throw down small crawlers as well. But that's a lot of spines. Yeah, that is a lot of spines there. Demi playing is super safe. Even more spines coming down behind this. Uh, I do wonder if he's almost over committing to this now, but it looks like he is fully saturated on two bases. Anyway, uh, we do have oh, just getting the denial there on the Nidus in the main as well. And the first few muters coming out. I do agree. I do think that Demi could probably afford to cancel some of these spine crawlers, and that will give him enough minerals to make even more mutas as well. But he allows everything to finish, so he's taking this very seriously. He's very heavily fortified here at his natural. The mutas are on the way, and uh, even though mutas are coming out, Ender is getting ready back at home. He has a lot of spore crawlers all over the place. Yeah, Ender definitely looking to keep himself safe there as we do have those links. Kind of poking out, seeing if they can escape here comfortably. Um... The Overlord's going to be getting cleared out as well, so we don't have to worry too much about Nidus's in the main anymore. Ooh, nice dodge as well from Demi. Yeah, I'm loving the uh, repowering there from Demi, avoiding those initial piles. The Muta count is slowly getting higher and higher. Um, ooh, we have a Dropper Lord being set up as well, so Demi can try to go for a bit of a Link counter attack at the same time, which would be pretty insane. Again, there are a lot of Spore Crawlers across the map. There isn't really a lot to defend against the ground that will force the Roaches back home. Yeah, it looks like he is considering just elevating something out of there, but uh, actually a drone there, so he might oh. just be trying to take his third. Very interesting. Okay, he wants to expand. He wants to take a third base. We'll see if he can get away with it, uh, as Ender for now is just trying to contain his opponent. More roaches are rallying across the map, so Ender with that pretty hefty roach count. He's got more small crawlers being thrown down as well. Up. Yeah, there we go. Bar's coming down on these spines. He's going to be looking to slowly clear these out. But Demi has so many spines here. And I do think this is part of the reason that he made so many as well. Is just so even if he loses some to Biles here, he's going to be fine. Exactly. He hasn't lost any yet, but he's ready for that scenario. The Muta's they dip in, but will they take a lot of hits? Muta almost does go down. Demi is expanding. He's getting a bit of a hidden base over on the right-hand side. But Ender is not expanding. He's not taking a third base. Demi is aware of that. And Ender, he's just still committed on two bases. Oof. Yeah, Ender committing really hard, trying to make sure that he's keeping Demi contained here. Uh, these muters are not going to be able to get too much done here, as we do see another spine is going to be going down for Demi. Even more spines getting thrown down behind this, and oh, it looks like Ender is going to be going for it. Yeah, I love it. He's just pushing forward with those spore crawlers. The queens, the roaches, the ravages as well. Can Demi hold on as so many muters are going down to the queens? Yeah, Mute is going down and Ravage is going down as well, but the spores are just a little bit too much. Ender uh, breaks on through and he takes down at Demi in game two. GG, well played. A solid all in there from Ender, really punishing the greed of Demi. And even though he had a, a, a wall of spine crawlers, the mutas of Demi didn't really get to do too much. They killed like one Ravager, they killed one Overlord. They couldn't, they, they did force a reaction, yes, but they didn't really add much to the main fight.
Yeah, and I mean, you said it yourself that what Demi was doing was very risky and, and it was able to prove that to us with a very good reaction, though. Exactly. You know, Demi, it would have been ideal if he had gotten away with a hidden spire, right? If he was able to get away mm -hmm. with um with a spire completely unscattered. But Ender was able to get eyes on it uh, pretty early on, especially when it came to the, uh, the gas timings in the lair and able to respond beautifully, able to punish Demi for the two-ace muta. Yeah, really well done. So we're going to be going to a game three here. Game number three, the final game of this series, the final game to determine who faces off against Christiana in the next round. Uh, as we're kind of nearing the end here of the event, it's it's this game, then, of course, the upper semis, and then the grand finals as well. So only three series left here uh, in, in Sparkling Tuning Cup number 36. Yeah, nice. And it has been... A uh, very stacked bracket as well. We've been seeing the, the Southeast Asian Zergs doing very well for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll have to see who is going to be able to go through and whether they're going to be able to take down Christiana as well because uh, he's a very strong player. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We shall see. And... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to point out as well that um, there was a moment there where Biles did connect and they took down four muters and softened up a lot of muters as well uh, when Ender was pushing up. So, yeah, some uh, some rough, right. <laughs> rough moments for Demi, unfortunately. Rough moments. Um, but at least we get a game three. At least we get an ace match. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Demi was still looking quite confident in that game. So, uh, I think this is absolutely anyone's game coming into game number three here on Royal Blood. Exactly, exactly. As, oh, and it was just taking a moment to get some water to prepare himself to get ready for the final game of this series. We're getting into this. It all ends here on Royal Blood. Okay, as we do have those beats, we're getting into it. Have you been playing much lately? I feel like you took a couple of days off, right? Once I, you were feeling sick. Yeah, I usually don't stream or play during the weekend because we're casting. Um, but it also doesn't huh. help that I got sick on Friday, so I've, <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't. I haven't. You didn't play off stream. No, no, I never play off stream. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Animal. Uh, I document all my failings, Buffy. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Smooch. <laughs> all right, but let's get into it. Here in at the bottom left-hand corner of the map, it is the Indian Zerg for Matcherino Esports. This is Demi. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have the we have the pink Zerg player, the Filipino Zerg. It is Ender. Oh my, just for you, Bobby. <laughs> oh, the gold base. Okay. He's crazy. I feel like, yeah, I haven't seen a gold base CPC in ages. I remember this was a really big thing on Pride of Altaris, mm -hmm. where basically so. every ZBZ that was a bit of a meta game based yeah. on who was going to be the player that goes for the gold base. But I feel like Royal Blood hasn't really played out like that. Yeah, you've like unlocked a repressed memory of, of casting on Pride of Altaris. <laughs> I just, yeah, it, I mean, it was fun to watch, you know, it was just a, a battle of the gold base for, for a lot of those EVZs. As you mentioned, we do see the gold base being taken on this map quite a lot in uh, PvT. Uh, I've experienced at least, and PvP as well. Um, not so much in ZVZ, so I think this is a first for me. Yeah, I can't remember having seen it recently, to be honest. So here we go. We'll see if Ender can piece it together. We'll see how long it takes him for piece to, to piece it together as well. Um, that's going to be kind of a big factor as to whether or not this is going to pay for itself and whether or not Demi can get away with this gold. He can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> uh, it will play a pretty nice mind game as well, just because True. Um, we know now that Demi's capable of going for 12 pulls. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Yes, it's going to be a bit suspicious having no base, though. Yeah, so, okay, Ender did open up Hatchgat's pool, but upon seeing the lack of expansion, he... There we go, Spinecrawler. Two... Oh, my... Two Spinecrawlers yeah. all the way. I mean, upon not seeing a natural base, this looks like a 13-12. 13-12, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's going to be pretty important that he pieces this together. He does already cancel one of these spines. Looks like he's a little bit suspicious of whether or not this is the real deal already, just because he hasn't seen any links coming across the map. 
Exactly. So he is suspicious and he is going to be sending out some links. He's going to be scouting around. And if he checks the gold, what can Demi really do about this? He does have a queen in position, but only a queen to defend here. And we've got quite a lot of links coming out from Ender. Yeah, the queen is going to be trying to tuck itself into that corner there, but with this many lings, it should definitely be going down. We do see some nice little bits of drone micro coming out from Demi there, just trying to mess it with these lings, but those drones going to be paying the ultimate price there to try to save the queen. Yeah, three drones go down. Well worth it for De sorry for Ender. It uh, looks like he won't be able to shut this down yet, but he's fully aware of what's going on. He throws out a bailing nest. He's got link speed on the way and more lings on the way to punish this goal. Yeah, and it does not want to let this fly. We have Link Speed and Bane kicking in. Meanwhile, for Demi, very fast Roach Warren himself. Uh, so he will be having Roaches coming out to try to deal with this. Uh, looks like he did make some of these links from the uh, from his goal base, which I think is a bit of a mistake. I feel like he should have just been making Roaches from this base yeah. and links from the other base, but uh, looks like he's going to be okay to push this back anyway. Yeah, and link speed kicks in a little bit faster for Demi, so he is able to shut down and pick away at some of those links. Meanwhile, Bailings are being morphed in, but Demi with this Roach all in, he's going to be able to bypass or have an answer to those Bailings. Ender is still in a little bit of trouble, and this gold is still mining here. Demi is so far getting away with it. Yeah, Demi scouts as well the Bane Nest, which is going to be very important there. Uh, he does have to be careful. He sees these lings. He knows that he doesn't want to get his own units caught out in the middle of the map. Definitely doesn't want to allow a Rumbay into his main. Yeah, he's able to keep up with the lings with the movement here of Ender. At the same time, Bane is going to be waddling How it's actually heading towards that middle line. It is spotted by Demi. He does see those Bane lings. That's kind of cute. Uh, I think they will be able to get on over there, and that does mean that the Lings, as they do come back to respond for Demi, are going to be a little bit slow to get there. We have a bit of a split coming out there, so uh, maybe a little bit wasteful there for Ender. Yeah, only a little, two drones go down. Only two workers at the same time, though. A big Ling counterattack. Ender does find a way in. He's going to get into the Queen, and he's going to get into that Mineral Lion. Queen goes down. Roach gets surrounded as well. We are going to be seeing a couple of the drones of Demi going to be going down. Some nice hold position coming out from him. Does reduce it to only one drone going down. Looks like it's going to be a second, but I think that'll be it. Oh, yeah. Four in total. We have a couple of cheeky bailings being morphed in, but they will not finish. They do get caught out at the same time. Another big counter attack. Demi's being pulled apart. He can't defend both bases at once. They're just so spread apart. And without map control, you can really abuse this. Yeah, so many lings there coming out. Demi still trying to keep a few units back in his main to make sure that he's safe there. But with these bailings protecting the lings, Ender takes out this gold base. GG is called, and he will be progressing. GG, well played. Despite Demi having quite a bit of momentum in this series, Ender will fight back, and Ender will advance on to the semifinals. GG, so we're going to be having Ender against Christiana here. Let's go. Oh, we knew it was going to be a PVZ, just not quite certain uh, what kind of PVZ it would be. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to Ender. Um, when it comes to that build from Demi, again, I've never seen that in a ZVZ before. A really bold move. The biggest difference between, um, you know, uh, this map, Royal Blood, and Pride of Altaris is that base is actually closer to your opponent, <laughs> right? Like, so it's it's a little bit harder to reinforce. Yeah, okay. Like, it's a little bit harder mm -hmm. to really support as well. As we saw, Demi was having a really hard time um, defending both his main base and his forward goal base as well and, and mm -hmm. you know, preserving his, his workers even or anything. Yeah, Demi in both of those last two games, just going for a bit of a risky play and Ender with the textbook punish. Yeah, exactly. So really well done from our Filipino Zerg player. And we now have our final semi-finals ready for us. We're just going to be getting ready, or we're just going to be setting it up here. Uh, it's going to be a PVZ between Christiana and Ender. Yeah, okay. So Christiana going to be facing another similarly aggressive SEA Zerg. I do feel like, uh, especially in that matchup, Ender and Jug... Uh, Ender and Gogo Joey can be somewhat similar, so hopefully Christian is warmed up in that regard. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he is warmed up and hopefully he's uh, well rested and ready for this. You know, he was able to get some water, get some food, you know, stretch his roaches, uh, massage his marine and, and, and be ready for some Ender action. Oh, his marine? It sounds bad when you put it like that. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't like that. Oh, oh, no. You don't like to massage a marine, Fafi? Oh. <laughs> not, when, not when people are waiting for me to play a game of StarCraft. <laughs> you know, like, it's too stressful, Papi. There's too much pressure. I can't, I can't, I can't finish. I can't, I can't get it going. Oh. Some people, they like the pressure. Yeah, the oh. marine can't stim without medevac support. <laughs> True, true. I mean, you say that. <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, uh, it is, it is. You can live life on the edge if you want, but it's yeah. not me. Yeah, yeah. We like edging. 